good morning, or it might be good evening, wherever you're at. It's morning here. <clears throat> so it's Ed again. I'm back with another one. I'm going to put a short one together about how much air a drive moves. And this is another one of those terms that gets used a lot. And it's another one of those things that seems to be a mystery to some. It's pretty fundamental information, and I hope it stays that way. What we have in front of us on this slide is a blower performance chart for a high boy furnace. This is an oil furnace that this information has got to be 10 years old or more, which is irrelevant because airflow is airflow is airflow. This might be a situation where you're in an existing home. You were able to secure the blower performance chart and you want to estimate the airflow. It is as simple as looking at the external static pressure, which is across the top, and checking the blower speed compared to that external static pressure. So if we have this furnace right here that's got a three ton drive in it at a half inch of external static pressure, we would be moving approximately 1278 CFM. That's it. Uh, this whole test should take you maybe five minutes max. If we're going to be taking static pressure readings in a duct, I strongly recommend that you use static tips. Can you take static pressure readings with something other than a static tip? Yes. Um, are, are readings going to be more reliable with a static tip? Yes. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. We want to connect those static tips to a manometer. Uh, I got a bunch of different manometers on the screen right now that I've used these exact ones or something similar to it over the years. Whether you're using a magnahelic gauge, an incline manometer, some sort of digital gauge, or ooh, there's my favorite, you got to use a, a differential uh, pressure gauge. It's that simple. And there's a whole slew of them out there for you to choose from that have the ability to do the same thing and go above and beyond. Connect it with a hose to a static tip and make sure you have proper placement. On your screen right now, you have two examples of measuring external static pressure. The external static pressure is what we measure and compare it to that blower data that we saw a couple screens ago, and we'll see again in just a minute. When Checking the external static pressure for a fan coil, one static tip goes in the supply, one goes in the return. If the manufacturer includes a filter, they'll mention it in the blower data, then we should place our return static tip so it includes the pressure drop of the filter. If the filter is an accessory filter, then we don't want to include it in our external static pressure measurement. The important thing to remember here is when we have a Fan coil, <clears throat> we got one in the supply, one in the return. When we have a furnace coil combination, which you see on the right, we want to be in the return and before the coil. The manufacturer knows what coil is being installed on a fan coil, and the blower performance data is created with it. The one on the right, the furnace coil combination, the manufacturer doesn't know what coil you're going to use or if you're going to use a coil. And so, therefore, <clears throat> the coil is not included in the external static pressure tables. Here's an example. Again, we got a three ton drive uh, at a half inch of external static pressure. We would be moving uh, 1236 CFM. One of the things that we commonly see is manufacturers will be pretty close to their nominal size drive at a half inch of external static pressure on high speed. And that goes for PSC technology. Uh, there is some uh, correlation to that in constant torque uh, motor technology, but mm, don't automatically assume that if you're at a half inch, you're gonna get the nominal CFM. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. So there's our furnace coil combination. Grab an appropriate manometer, stick one in the supply before the coil. Um, Stick one in the return. If it's an accessory filter, you want to be downstream from it. In this example, our fan is running on high. We're measuring 0.6 inches of water column. 
and this is blower data from United Technologies. This might be a carrier or a Brian. Oh, I can see in the thing up there, it's a carrier. Furnace, uh, 70,000 BTUs, three ton drive at 0.6 inches of external static pressure, removing 1,125 CFM. That might be perfect for a two and a half ton air conditioner. That might be perfect for a three ton air conditioner. It depends on the sensible ratio of the house. Want more information on that? There's several videos available about those topics. Air handler, one in the supply, one in the return. I'm measuring a half inch of external static pressure. We look at the blower chart. I'm in a vertical configuration, 230 volts, half inch of external static pressure. I'm on high speed. I'm moving a little bit short of the nominal 1200 CFM. It is what it is, right? That's the best way to put it. We don't use rules of thumb. We look it up, and this is simply how you look it up. This is a good example of how in this top row, we can see a two ton drive greater than the nominal airflow is being moved at an external static pressure, which is higher than a half inch. So this might be an example where you could have as high as a 0.7 external static pressure and still move that nominal 400 CFM per ton. The lower, Example shows an 80,000 BTU furnace with a four ton drive. And if we happen to be on medium speed, excuse me, medium high speed at 0.8, that could be a perfect match for a three ton system if you're a big advocate of 400 CFM per ton. So when it comes to blower sizes, just because it is a specific size doesn't mean we have to run it at that capacity. It's not uncommon to see a four ton drive moving airflow that is significantly less. The opposite is seldom true though, although not completely out of the realm of possibility as shown in the two ton drive at the top of that screen. So the moral of the story is high external static pressure isn't always bad. Um, we have to look it up. Uh, there are some things that we can compare to and say typically, uh, but typically isn't precision. Right, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for actual numbers. No ballpark, let's do math. <clears throat> and to round it out, we're gonna show an example of a constant torque ECM motor because we're not seeing much in the way uh, or we're not seeing any PSC uh, or standard induction motors in furnaces anymore. It's all gonna be ECM technology. Uh, more so constant torque because it's the cheaper product, although uh, it's a fine way to move air. And in this example right here, we can see, depending on how we have our switches set, we're looking at air flows that are somewhere between almost three tons of nominal and you know, down at 1132 uh, versus some external static pressures of 0 0.6, 0 0.7, or 0.8. So we got a two and a half ton air conditioner and you have a high sensible heat ratio. 1100 CFM might be your target. You could have... Uh, an external static pressure of 0.8. Now, that's not only for use as to confirm that you actually have the airflow in the system that you may be designed for. Speaking of design, we would be starting off at 0.8, and then we would be deducting things like an evaporator coil, a filter, a uh, bunch of other stuff that potentially is going to ultimately allow us to solve for what our available static pressure is. And as we all know, our available static pressure times 100 divided by our total effective length will give us the last slide cut out on me because I moved my mouse a little bit too much and it jumped to the next slide, which was actually blank. So I threw this one together real quick. I was going to finish it, it being the previous slide with how we determine our friction rate. And step one in the friction rate worksheet that's on your screen right now is our airflow versus our external static pressure. And that's step one or the beginning process, beginning of the process for calculating our friction rate. I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible. So I'm gonna end it here. Again, if you guys have any specific topics that you want me to address, um, ask. Uh, I have to do some practicing for this stuff, and that's what I'm using this for right now. See you in the next one. I can't find the button. Oh.